Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Yes, come on and worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell We have a voice here, and we can give God praise. Hallelujah. Every year on the third Sunday of October is where we celebrate Laity Sunday in the United Methodist Church. However, other churches or other Wesleyan traditions do not celebrate Laity Sunday or may have their own version of it. Now, I must tell you my background as a non-denominal, denominational Pentecostal minister we didn't celebrate, we didn't celebrate Laity Sunday. That's what I grew up in. But I must say that I love the Methodist tradition of Laity Sunday and the importance of laity to the overall mission of the church. You know why I like it? Mainly because it focuses on the necessity of every believer. Everybody's important. There's no big I's and no little U's. Everyone has credence, everyone has a voice. There's no kings or queens or uh, there's just brothers and sisters, koinonia. Come on, a fellowship of love. And I love that, I must say. The theme of UMC Lady Sunday since uh, 2020, uh, 21 or this quadrennial, quadrennial yo, uh, is the theme rise up, rise up, coming from the biblical text uh, to 2 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 14, which has already been read in your hearing this morning. Each year, the focus has been on a different aspect of rising up for the cause of Christ. For instance, 2021, the theme was rise up and revive God's gift of faith. As such, we were challenged to remember those who's, who introduced and brought us to the faith. Paul recalls the ministry of Timothy's grandmother, Lois. Anybody remember your grandmother and your mother? They instilled the word of God in him, and they instilled the word of God in us. I can still remember hearing the voices of mothers of Zion teaching and correcting and guiding me as a young, young lady of what it means to be a true young lady in Christ. There was a standard of holiness a way that a young woman should carry herself. These days, you can't, you can't talk to or correct young people these days without them having an attitude, or even worse, the parent might come to you and give you a word. You can't say, you can't correct nobody. You can't, you can't give them any guidance of what it means to serve the Lord in holiness and to, to look like a woman of God and to act like a woman of God and to love like a woman of God and be chaste as a woman of God or even that as a man of God. Y'all got to do it too. Praise the name of Jesus. We can't say nothing these days, but we remember Paul saying that Lois and Eunice poured in to Timothy and showed him the way. And the same way that they showed him the way, we must show our youth the way. Sometimes we might be confronted, but it still should not deter us because the children and the youth are our future. Our future. It is important that we pour into them. We must, we are reminded not to forget the sacrifice of those who poured into us. When we, it was, our, whether it was our parents or our grandparents, aunts, aunties, adoptive parents, or so on, they deserve a seat of honor. Just remember who poured into you, who brought you to, to this place. Who, just remember and give them a place of honor in your heart. 
We are also reminded that we should never forget the sacrifices of our ancestors who came before us during difficult times when the Declaration of Independence did not pertain to us. To remember those who were under the bondage of slavery but prayed, worked, and, and fought for a better day. We enjoy the privileges of a better day because they marched. We enjoy privileges because they worked hard. We enjoy privileges because they organized and bombarded the legal system and prayed down heaven so their children and their children's children and their children's children's children could have a better day. That's why we are here today. We must refuse to let our children get left behind because we're too busy or because of hardship. They are too important to our legacy. This society has already labeled our children failures from the beginning, just because of the color of the skin sometimes, and seeks to leave them behind. But in the name of Jesus, we have the power to curse that in the name of Jesus and to speak life. I speak life to my children. I speak life to my grandchildren. I speak life to their children that are not even here yet. I speak life in the name of Jesus. We need to speak life. And not let other people speak of the death and, and hardship and poverty. Speak life and it shall come to pass. Why? Because there's power in what I say. There's power when I speak because I know the master and he cares for me. And I'm under his tutelage and I'm under his, his supreme hand, under his guidance. So whenever you say, Lord, I speak life, God hears us. Whenever God, when we say, I speak deliverance, God hears us. Live in such a manner that our children can go forth in the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak wholeness. I speak success in the name of Jesus. So mothers, don't give up on your children. They might not be acting right today, but if you put something in, it, in them, it's going to stay in them. They're going to remember. They might remember at a hard place because sometimes got to go through the school of hard knocks. Praise the name of Jesus. We try and give them the easy way, but they don't take it all the time. But praise the name of Jesus. They will remember. If you bring them up in church, bring the children to church and let them sit under the word in the name of Jesus. So they might know the word and get the word down in their heart that they can have something to live on. They can have something to feed on in the dark days. And when the enemy comes up against them, the word of the Lord will rise up in them. Hallelujah, because of what we put in them. In the name of Jesus, I declare it to be so in Jesus' name. In 2022, the theme was rise up and reveal the grace of Christ that brings life to others. Here, Paul reminds Timothy that the gospel is powerful and those who accept the God of the gospel are transformed into the righteousness of God. No other message on earth has the power to do that. No other message has the power to change our very nature. No other message can change our hearts and change our minds. That message is important. It does something that it is supernatural. Some people don't believe it's supernatural. They believe that it's just historical and they believe it's written with errors and stuff. The Bible is written, but the Bible tells me, hallelujah, that it, can, it is a strong power in my life that we can do the exceeding and the abundant if we just believe and if we walk in the ways of God. We have authority. The authority puts us in right standing with God. In verse 8, Paul tells us, Timothy, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our God. God has called us to a holy thing. Notice that the calling was not reserved just for clergy, but for all laymen, every one of us, laymen and preacher alike. We don't have to wait for a special call. The call is already in the word for us to be salt and light in the earth to be evangelists and missionaries, to pray, praise, and worship. So why should we sit waiting on someone to give us marching orders? The assignment is already given. Go out into the world and make disciples and teach all men that if they come unto God, they can be saved, delivered, and set free. That is the charge this morning. That is the assignment. You don't have to wait for a title. You don't have to be, wait to be minister so-and-so. You don't have to wait to be deacon so-and-so. You don't have to wait to be evangelist so-and-so, missionary so-and-so, whatever title you're waiting on, you don't got to wait on it because the assignment and the charge is given in the name of Jesus. It's right there at our doorstep. All we got to do is walk in it. All we got to do is believe that God is in us and he is working through us that people might be saved. He can talk through you. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? God can talk through you. 
His message comes through you. That's where the word comes in. That word that's inside us comes out. Something working on the inside. Going out to the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. And oh, what a change in the people's life who have the privilege to hear you speak and to say the goodness of God in your life. So what does it mean to rise up all these four years that we're talking about rising up? What does it actually mean to rise up? It means, in my mind, it means to stand. To stand. Today, the challenge is to stand for the Christ of righteousness. To let your voice be heard in support of the gospel. To say no to injustice and no to oppression. No to depression. To set the captive free and lift up the downtrodden. In an individual spiritual sense, Rising up can also indicate personal growth, number one, overcoming challenges, two, and three, awakening to a higher purpose, to go beyond the natural and push into God's presence. Now, time does not allow me to break down these three areas, but I love the connotation of rising up, incorporating the idea of personal growth. Someone said that if you are at the same place you were when 10 years ago, then you're stunted, you're retarded. But we are supposed to, we're supposed to grow. So you, there ought to be a difference. We ought to have some kind of growth in us, like a tree. You plant it, and if it's still, if it's still at this point next year, uh, or this size this year, next year, you're like, something wrong with that tree. That's a dwarf. Something's wrong. But we need to grow in the name of, in the name of Jesus. The connotation of personal growth and having a spiritual awakening because it alludes to the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives, operational in our lives. This is when we give room for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. The Holy Spirit deals with us and helps us to become who God intended for us to be and to get in sync. Come on, is anybody in sync with the Spirit this morning? It means that you are in agreement with what God is doing in your life. Are you in agreement with what God is doing in your life? Has God, you, do you have a, a God mindset? You're in sync with the mind of God, what he's doing? Or are you in sync with what you want to do? There's a difference in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, you got to be in sync with God, with the mind of God. That means that you are connected with God. Anybody connected with God this morning? Or are you just connected on Sunday morning when you walk through the doors? Are you connected at home? Hallelujah, are you connected in your car? Are you connected in your job? Are you connected in the marketplace? Are you connected that when people see you walking down the street, they know how you, who you are because you've got a continent of you you got to walk about you you've got a way about you huh are you connected are you in sync I challenge you this morning that if you're not in sync with the Holy Spirit he can put you in sync this morning I'm not talking about a musical group I'm talking about being in connection with the Almighty God who can make a difference in your life hallelujah he can do anything but fail in your life I'm not talking about a pop group hallelujah I'm talking about the name of Jesus, being in sync with God, the one who can save us, the one who can revive us, the one who can lift us up, the one who can rise us up in the name of Jesus. If you are in sync with God, put your hands up and give God glory this morning. I'm in sync with the master. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Think there's got to be a point in your life when you recognize it's not about you, but it's all about God working in you and through you to accomplish his purpose in your life. It's the point where people's opinion of you don't matter anymore. I don't know about you, but people's opinion don't matter no more to me. Hallelujah. Because I've got to be about the master's business. I ain't got time to play around. I don't know how much time I got left. Hallelujah. I've got to be about the master's business. Now, if you're younger, you might be concerned about what, what they say about you on Facebook. You might be concerned about what they say about you on Instagram. But I dare you in the name of Jesus to get concerned about what's right and what the master calls important. That What's important, hallelujah, is that you love him is that you do what you are to do in the name of Jesus, what you're called to do, that you rise up in the name of Jesus and be called different and be called the ambassador that God has called you to be in the name of Jesus. 
it's even more special when we can do this together as a body of believers and accomplish his mission. God has given us land for a purpose. God has given us this building for a purpose. God has placed you in this arena, this ministry for such a time as this for a purpose. God has placed his talents and his gifts in you for a purpose. So it's time for each of us to rise up and do our part in the power of the Holy Spirit, with grace, with power, with authority, with intelligence, with humility, and with creativity. He ha can accomplish so much in us together than apart. Hallelujah. Some people were just trying to be great all by yourself. You know you can't be great all by yourself. We are better together. Even Martin Luther King had a whole array of folks that helped to lift him up, huh? He wasn't great all by himself. You ain't great all by yourself. You think you're a wonder? Hallelujah. No. In the name of you, we're great together. We are great together. Hallelujah. Come on, give somebody a high five and say, we are great together. We are great together. Let's do it together. Let's rise up together. In the name of Jesus, we can accomplish a whole lot if we recognize the importance of that person that's sitting right next to you. It's not you. Hallelujah. It's the person sitting next to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Onward to 2023. The theme was rise up and remain committed to sound teaching. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. They use the phrase healthy words uh, when I was reading uh, online. I questioned what are healthy words. Firstly, it refers to truth. Truth about what God says about us. Truth about what is right and what is wrong. Truth about what pleases God and what is abhorrent to him. In John 17 and 17, Jesus prays for the disciples and says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. We are obligated to embrace sound doctrine, which is truth. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Come on, we living in that day right now. We living in that, I, I could go somewhere, but we living in that day right now. Not just outside the church, but in the church. You thought you could come to church and find truth. You thought you could come to church and find sound doctrine, but we what? Mm -mm. You're not gonna get me in trouble this morning. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> there is a new faction of Christianity, or, or what I like to call pseudo Christianity, nowadays that has crept in the church filled with ideas of alternative facts, progressivism, and pluralism, and that which cheapens grace and lessens the standard of holiness that God requires. But the standards are God remains the same throughout eternity. God's precepts do not change. His laws do not change. His standards do not change. His, his, his word does not change. God's requirements do not change. God's love for us all does not change. God is good. He does not change. The same thing he required before 2,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, he still requires today. And he requires truth. And he requires holiness in the inward part. Come on now. You know people don't like to talk about holiness anymore. But God called us to be a holy people, a holy generation. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Are we a holy people this morning? Or do we change with the wind? Do we change it? When, when it depends on who's standing around us and what arena we're in. It depends on if we're at the Christmas dinner or at the Thanksgiving dinner. Who's there? Huh? Come on. Or do, are we like God? The same. The same. Because he is immutable and we need to be the same all the time. Hallelujah. Holy all the time. Wherever we are, we are holy and separated unto God all the time. Not when it feels good, not when it's convenient, 
Not if we can get ahead if we tell a little bitty, you know, little bitty, you know, it's just a little bitty. A little bitty, just a little bitty where God doesn't, he don't mind. Come on now, he just, come on. He said, be holy in the inward part. Come on, in the name of Jesus. God's love. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness means, again, to be set apart for God. It means to live in a way that pleases him, which often means that we will be at odds with what the world says is okay. It's a dangerous ad agenda, progressivism. It's a danger dangerous agenda, this pseudo-Christianity, because it blurs the lines between orthodoxy or straight thinking and wayward thinking, the difference between. It makes people think they have salvation when they really don't. That's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing. In truth, some have a form of godliness, religiosity that is far from religious living. They say that if it feels good to you, then do it. And if it feels right to you, then it's okay with God. But my Bible tells me that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. You can find that in Proverbs 14 and 12. As God's ambassadors, which is what each one of us are, we must stand for the truth and sound doctrine that will set men free. We are God's ambassadors, so rise up in the name of Jesus and be that ambassador that God has called you to be that different person. Have you yourself, your grandmother had an experience with God, your auntie had an experience with God, so people you know had an experience uh, with God, you watch people shout and you watch people cry and you watch people, but where is your experience with God? That's the power that will give you what you need, need on the inside to reach the world. So we have got to have an experience with God, an experience with the Holy Spirit. It's not a public thing. It's a private thing. It's a personal thing. It might be among the people, but then again, it might be in your prayer closet. It might be in your living room. It might even be in your bathroom. Hallelujah. But it is a personal experience with God. Has anybody had a personal experience with God? Come on now. I don't believe you. Has anybody had a personal experience with God where he changed the way you walk and he changed the way you think and he changed the way you do things? Anybody had a personal experience with God? Hallelujah. If I leave you feeling a little vulnerable, that's how you can tell when the Holy Spirit you leaves you feeling a little Let's say, oh my God, all them people saw me rolling on the floor. I ain't say you got to do that, uh, but I'm saying it leaves you feeling a little vulnerable though sometimes. They, like they know about you. They know, they know about you. You know, you know how we are. We private. We don't like people to know about us, huh? huh? But I dare you to get beyond yourself and beyond what people think about you and be on all the stuff that's going on around you and having a personal experience with God. And the Holy Spirit will charge you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will invigorate you. You might be tired. Hallelujah. You might feel let down and you might be heartbroken and you might not have all the money you think you should. You might have had your host taken back or something. But that Holy Spirit gets on the inside of you and charges you and makes you feel better and makes you feel like more than a conqueror and lets you know, hallelujah, that you have the power in you to recover. In the name of Jesus, anything that you've gone through, broken dreams, broken heartbreak, heartbreak, whatever, took money gone, all that stuff, the Holy Spirit gets on the inside of you and lets you know that it's all going to be okay. Hallelujah. You ever had that kind of experience before? People left you that you thought was important to you? And God says, I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. I, you have to have that experience with God and that fellowship with God, not just when everybody is around, hallelujah, but that fellowship with him at all times. 
Hallelujah. He is our problem solver. He is our mountain mover. So let us rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit and do the work he has called us to do and guard the work he has trusted in us. The Holy Spirit resides in you. And the Bible says that that's dunamis power. Yes, that Bible says it's more than enough. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be believers. So I challenge you today to rise above your per present circumstance. Rise above the naysayers and rise above the doubters. Rise above fear and apprehension. Rise above self-doubt self and rise above your own idiosyncrasy. Because we sometimes, we hold our own selves back. So we got to rise above, above what we think our own. You ain't even nobody out there. Who you gonna fight, yourself? No, you got to rise above what you think. Arise above that voice that tells you you're nothing. God says you're something. God says you're somebody. Hallelujah. Believe it down in the city of your soul that you are somebody, that you are made for a purpose. Hallelujah. That you are made for the glory and the honor of God. You are made for something more than where you are right now. Some of us have accepted mediocrity, but God says you out called you to be great. I called you to be powerful. I called you to be different. And you believed what people said. You believed that you won't ever be nothing. People said you ain't gonna be nothing. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do nothing. Your life is gonna be empty. You'll never be nothing. But the Holy Spirit on the inside lets you know that that is a lie from the pit of hell and that you shall be. And you shall rise up. Come on and get up on your feet if you believe that you shall rise up.